From the Dern, you can't make this up file, Lee. Uh, Democrat Representative Eric Swalwell out of California bets you back in April 2017, right? Dares President Trump to release the FISA docs. <laughs> dared him to. Here, double dog dared dub, him. <laughs> I double dog dare you. Swalwell, here's the AP headline. Swalwell dares Trump to classify the surveillance documents. I'll read from this. It's dated 4-5, 2017. The Democrat on the House panel investigating Donald Trump's ties to Russia is issuing an ultimatum. If the president is going to accuse members of the Obama administration of breaking the law, he should prove it. Well, yesterday, Trump went scorched earth and ordered the DOJ to publicly release all the text messages and the documents, at least the, the ones in the FISA report, which are supposed to be actionable anyway, without redaction. So um, Democrat Representative Swalwell was thrilled with this, right? I mean, he's finally got... No. <laughs> Called President Trump's move. Are you ready for this? Absolutely lawless. He demanded Trump do it a year ago. Well, and it is perfectly within his executive privilege right to do so. Yes. Here's the tweet from Representative Eric Swalwell, who demanded Trump release these documents. This shows, this shows you folks, again, Trump could cure cancer. Oh, yeah, and, and they'd yeah. find a problem with it. They'd yeah. find a problem. They say, well, doctors are going to be out of, out of business, and then their families will start. Yeah, but people won't die. It's bad. I tell you, bad. Anyway, here's Representative Eric Swalwell. Lawless. He's absolutely lawless. At real Donald Trump is a subject of an investigation. Using his power to selectively release classified information is an abuse of power. No, he didn't selectively release those tr- those uh, texts, did he? Nor is no, he was the all subject of, of any investigation. He's, I know. This lie keeps going on. You talk about fake news. The president is not the subject of any criminal investigation, period. Despite what you hear in the media, he is not. And, and, and these news sources that are repeating this phrase, they, they need to stop these people from saying this because it is simply not accurate. Had it been said about uh, the Obama administration, about uh, President Obama, they'd be having a dying duck fit. Absolutely. So the same, the same Democrat demanding he release all of this stuff is now calling him lawless and a disgrace for releasing all of this stuff. It just goes to show you, no. it's, it's faux outrage. Yeah. It's just, it's all astroturf. It's not real. You can't take it seriously. Now, here's where it gets interesting. And I want to know what you think about this, because I was trying to strategize it out. Okay, here's what we don't know about this. Does Trump have copies of all this? Does somebody on Trump's side playing for the Trump team, maybe Devin Nunes, I don't know, have copies of all of this? I'm thinking no on the texts between Andrew McCabe and Comey, but I don't know. Because here's the thing. If it's declassified, right, then Trump could release it himself. Devin Nunes could release it. Mm Some whistleblower inside the FBI or DOJ. I mean, it's public information now. We have a right to it. They could release it. And they shouldn't be fired for it. Does it get released? Or we, do we go into a constitutional crisis where the heads of the FBI, DOJ, uh, who we don't even know who's the head of the DOJ. It's either Rod Rosenstein or Rip Van Sessions. I'm not sure who. Um, decide to defy the president. Do we do that? Do they do? It's going to be fascinating to watch. I don't know. I can't predict. What do you think? I don't know. I just I, this would be one of those selective leaks that uh, Republicans ought to use because it's certainly the tactic the left uses every ch- opportunity they get. Uh, Adam Schiff, famous for that, um, but and you know on that House Intelligence Committee. But uh, you know, just see that it gets leaked because it's certainly a tactic of the left in the Mueller investigation. Now, let's look at this uh, from a personal perspective. Okay, if I'm Rod Rosenstein, Rip Van Sessions is down the hall. He's asleep, right? Um, He's not going to do anything. Rosenstein is running the Department of Justice. Rosenstein uh, signed off on at least one of these FISA reports that we know of. He is knee deep in the law breaking Mm -hmm. and stands a decent chance if there were ever an honest prosecutor in the Justice Department of going to prison, right? If I'm Rod Rosenstein, I'm not giving you jack. I'm just not. Because, I mean, I'm just I'm I'm writing literally my own arrest warrant. So Rosenstein's not going to do that. Right. So Trump did an interesting thing here. He requested this information of the Department of Justice, the FBI and director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, three separate entities who have copies. Mm -hmm. So now Rosenstein's looking at Coats going, is he going to release that? Sessions is sound asleep. And uh, Christopher Wray, Trump's FBI director, who bizarrely has thrown himself under the bus. Christopher Wray is more of a disappointment to me even than uh, Jeff Sessions, who's at least paid some lip service to pretending, uh, to be fair. Christopher Wray literally has gone in there, could have been the great, the, the guy who goes down in history for rectifying the FBI, cleaning it up, and he slammed the door shut after swearing to Charles Grassley, oh yeah, I'll comply with your request. And uh, so Grassley sends him the subpoenas the week after he's confirmed and Ray's like, yeah, kiss my rear end and hasn't turned anything over since. 
All this stuff's been subpoenaed. So these guys are looking at each other this morning. Dan Coates, Rod Rosenstein, and Christopher Ray going, wait a minute, if I don't release this stuff, this stuff might come out from other folks too. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they do. Who's going to blink first? Who is going to blink first? Or do they all unite against the president in utter unconstitutional lawbreaking and say, no, we can't have it. And all that assumes that Trump doesn't have a copy of all this stuff, which he may. Yeah, you would think that he would have had at least eyes on the unredacted versions at some point. Now, here's what's interesting. Dan Coats is believed to be the person who already released the unredacted version of the FISA application, the whole thing, um, to the Senate Intelligence Committee. And then via the Senate Intelligence Committee, that went to the New York Times. Uh, they've got a full copy of it. The reporter does anyway. I assume the editors do there, too. It's good, mm-hmm. probably a good assumption. And uh, that reporter also worked for BuzzFeed. It's probably a fair assumption that they've got a full copy, too. Um, but we know that has made its way around the Senate Intel Committee. So we know that for a fact. Well, so, it, I mean, is he going to is he going to release it? He's got it. It must not be good for the left if the left, the leaning media, has got hold of the copies and they haven't leaked it or released it or printed it yet. Oh, I've been making this point for a long time. Remember when it all yeah. comes out, they've already got a copy. Yeah. I mean, there's, we've already looking at the lover of a reporter being prosecuted for leaking the copy to the reporter. Right, right. We know it's out there. Yeah. And they haven't printed it. That tells you how devastating this thing is. Well, it's, it's obviously got to be what we've been saying all along, that there, this whole thing stems, the FISA warrant stems from the Steele dossier, which was fabricated and paid for um, almost totally by the Clinton campaign, even though it may have initially been started by the, uh, within the Republican Party, the anti-Trump movement there, but it was quickly dropped and then picked up by uh, the, the Democrats and by the Hillary Clinton campaign. So you've got a completely fabricated document on which a FISA warrant was based, which makes the whole FISA warrant illegal. Yeah. And if there's nothing else but that, uh, but, you know, but the media reports fed to the media by the FBI so it could, they could be used for the FISA application and the uh, dossier. Should be the end of, at that second of the Mueller investigation. Yep. They period. Slam the door but shut. But you will hear, though. Oh no, 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 no! We can't do that. We can't do that. Uh, we've got to continue this investigation. There's still other things we've got to look at. We've got to continue this on. That'll be what you'll hear from Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, and That'll all be the outrageous. other usual Democrat suspects. Yeah, it will be outrageous if there's any journalistic integrity left in any of the left-leaning mainstream media, if they don't say, look, guys, come on, there's nothing here. The whole foundation of this was this for this warrant. This was done on a a completely fabricated piece of evidence. You've got to stop this now, period. There's no other way to do this. And if you don't hear that from the left-wing media, then, well, confidence is not high, I'll put it that way. Here's the interesting thing. If we get all this, there are eight people who could go down in flames. And it's not who you're thinking. Just eight? <laughs> the gang of eight. Yeah. Let's think about this because you want to make this all start to make sense, right? There are eight members of Congress who are ultimately responsible for everything the intel communities do. They have had all of this data on what's going on with Trump. They may not have the Comey text messages, but they are they are well aware, more aware. They have higher level security clearances than the intelligence committees do. They've overseen all of this, right? So if this comes out and the whole thing was lawless, there was never any basis for it, then there are eight people who are going to have to answer some really difficult questions. You want to know who they are? It'll start to make sense the role every one of these people has played in this. Let's start with the two who have nothing to say and egged on all these investigations of Trump from the beginning, knowing full well they were bogus, Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell. Where they been? Letting all these committees run investigations of Trump like a circus. Why? Because they were in charge when it went down. Their hands are all over it. Who else was in charge? Who else is on the Gang of Eight? Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Did they know? Odds are pretty good, given the high level. I mean, they oversee everything these agencies do, from the NSA to the Director of National Intelligence, to the CIA, to the FBI, way beyond even what the intel committees do. Almost to the level of, if these guys were in compliance with what they were doing on Russia, they were part of the coup. So who else? Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Hmm. Who else? Dianne Feinstein? Think about this for a minute, Lee. Stafford leaves Dianne Feinstein's office to do what? Raise tens of millions of dollars to pay for the dossier. Remember that? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, now then, and then Feinstein goes and investigates what her staffer put together. Diane Feinstein, look at her role in this. Who else is a member of the Gang of Eight? These are people whose tail is in the sling if this is devastating and they knew about it, which they should have. 
Richard Burr. Richard Burr, who has been the chief Republican persecutor in the Senate by the the Senate Intel Committee, by his own investigation of Trump, Burr. Now, who else is tails in the sling on this? This will be really interesting to you. Who are the other two members of the Gang of Eight who could pay personally if this whole thing is fraudulent and they knew about it? Odds are darn good they did because, again, they oversee these agencies. Adam Schiff. Mm-hmm. Now, do you see why Adam Schiff's out there lying at every turn? Yeah. Lying and lying. lying. And, and literally, they come out, these reports come out, and he just lied about them the week before. Why would someone do something that desperate? His rear end's in this link. Now, who is the last person who is a member of the Gang of Eight? Because you're going to know this name, Devin Nunes. Ah, uh, yes. Who has been out front painting himself, rightly or wrongly, I don't know, as the savior of the Republic from the deep state, doing everything he can to make this right? Maybe for good reason. And let's see, wasn't Devin he the one Nunes. that had uh, initially gave the uh, Trump administration some of the uh, information? Yep. So these people taking very different texts to protect their rear end, all of whom uh, had to have known most of this. I mean, they oversee all and know of and have reported to them directly all U.S. intelligence operations, open and covert. This FISA application would have had to have gone through them. If it did not, and they have not taken any action, their rear end is still in the sling. And so you see the different tax these individuals who look, Lee, who are the central players here? These guys mm-hmm. who's li- who, who literally their careers are on the line could be depending on what comes out. So you see Nunes handling it in one way, trying to make it right. I don't think anyone will fault him later. He's done everything he could to get at the truth. Schiff trying to obstruct the truth. Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell uh, allowing their respective houses to be turned into circuses with multiple investigations against Trump. I mean, it was the GOP that took away Trump's credibility on this with their investigation. Well, who personally stood to lose from Trump being persecuted and allowed to be persecuted by these intel agencies? Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell right there, along with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. It's all in line right now. Going to be interesting to see if anybody bothers to pick up the Gang of Eight angle on this. You can now begin to understand why they've acted the way they have this whole time. All makes sense, doesn't it? 